Good morning and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Parish this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and join in singing our opening song, Lift Up Your Hearts. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So special welcome to Father Reginald, the diocesan priest from the country of Nigeria, who's been in the United States studying for the past three or four years. And today is his 12th anniversary of being ordained a priest. So he's been helping out here and asked to uh, celebrate, and I asked him to preach. So let us welcome Father Reginald and celebrate his 12 years of priestly service with a round of applause. Dear people of God, for us to participate worthily in this sacrifice of the Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. 
So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit, one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to him, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give. It's for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are seen as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make the authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be saved, but to save, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. It's not every time I get to have the opportunity to celebrate my anniversary on a Sunday. I was sharing this with Father Michael just before the Mass and the other parishioners in the sacristy. Many a times it falls during the weekdays. And so when I checked the calendar today and I noticed it fell on a Sunday, I reached out to Father that I would like to celebrate it with you all here. And he graciously granted this opportunity for me. So, Father, I'm very grateful for this. This day reminds me of so many things. In the first place, it reminds me of the importance of gratitude. Gratitude to God for the opportunity to always serve in this sanctuary. St. Paul would always remind us that we are earthen vessels on which this treasure has been placed by our own merit by our own standard, we do not deserve this treasure God has given to us. Also, I'm grateful to my parents, my family, friends, and well-wishers who have been with me for these past 12 years. 
They've supported me in their different ways, right from my years in the minor seminary when I was just nine or 10 years old. I'm also grateful to you, the parishioners of this parish. I did share with a priest that this is a unique parish. Your welcoming spirit, your love for God, the number I see that attend daily masses, and the way you all participate in adoration every hour of the day makes you an amazing community. And I encourage you to build upon that. Secondly, it reminds me of the essence of the priesthood. And what is that? A call to service. In the readings of today, particularly in the gospel reading, we see that Jesus mentioned it to the apostles that the greatest among you must be your servant. The Greek word used there is diakonia, which today is translated to mean deacon. But in this core element, the verb there means diakonos, diakonia, to serve, to help others, to lead others, to endure with God. Its true meaning means to make things easier for others to partake in. This is important when we put it into context today and in the reading. Jesus, by using this word, was helping the apostles see that greatness, real greatness, would be measured by how they were able to help others bear the burden of life. The apostles understood this very well, and so they gave their all after this event. They eventually died for the sake of the gospel. And the first reading makes it very clear to us, by his suffering shall my servant justify many. In essence, God tells us today, I have come to serve and not to be served. And this is the space the priest embodies. So the priest is called primarily to serve the people of God, to help the people of God endure life, go through life, survive the holders of life, to help you understand that despite the rigors and complications in the world, there is purpose and there is meaning. This is a difficult responsibility for every priest. And as Father Michael would also tell you, it is not an easy task. And so we are able to do this through your prayers, through your encouragement. I always tell young men preparing for the priesthood that the priesthood is a solemn responsibility, but it is fulfilling. We will never have enough priests. I remember at my ordination, we were eight all together. But till today, we still need more men to take up the responsibility to become priests. So I invite the men here today, the young men, look upon this. The world is in need of men who are ready to become servants of the people of God. You too are called to serve, but in an entirely unique way, in your home, in your marriage. That is why marriage is a vocation. Because when you get married, you are saying, I'm ready to serve my partner, my wife, or my husband. I'm ready to serve my children in my own unique way as a father or as a mother. You are saying to yourself, I'm ready to give my all to help them endure life in a better way. You make life easy for them. You help them find purpose. You share in their burdens and in their sorrow. You share in their joys and in their victories. And that is why they say in marriage, the two shall become one. Marriage is a vocation, just as the priesthood is a vocation. So treat it with all, sole, all the solemn responsibility it deserves. Thirdly, this day reminds me of the challenges of trauma. In our world today, we are hearing lots and lots about post-traumatic growth, and that is what we do after a trauma. How do we grow from the experience of a difficult time? In the readings of today, from the first through the second, through the gospel, we see that theme of trauma popping out at different intervals. In the first reading, by his suffering shall my servant justify many. In the second reading too, we see it fully at work when the scripture tells us that we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weakness because he has been tested in every way. And in the gospel, Jesus again telling the apostles, 
You will drink the cup that I will drink. You will suffer too. You will go through these hard times. In all these, scriptures want us to understand that we could use our difficulties for good things. We could use our trauma to do great things. We could grow from that trauma. We could help others from our trauma. We could encourage people to be able to bear hard times based on our own experience and the toils and rigors we have gone through. So I invite us all today, do not allow a trauma go to waste. Use it for growth and to help the community. Today I invite us all, remember me in your prayers. Remember to pray for your pastor too, because we all need our prayers. Remember to pray for my uncle, who is also a priest, Father Paul Adogame. And remember to pray for young men who are considering the option of becoming priests. The world needs you. The world wants you. You are stars in the world. Shine brightly. Let us profess our faith. I, I believe. believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and the Holy Spirit was born and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who at the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The prayers of the faithful. We gather together on this Sunday we ask the Lord for his mercies upon us and to draw us closer to him. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Listecki, and all the baptized, that we embrace both the dying and the rising in our daily lives and grow into a fuller sharing of new life in Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to bear affliction, that God will strengthen us in the face of trial and hardship, so that we may remain faithful disciples each day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper identification with Christ, that in times of temptation we may look to Christ, who was tempted in every way, but who remained the faithful child of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to surrender pride, that we may honestly appreciate our gifts and weaknesses, and surrender our false sense of self to God, who heals all weaknesses, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to seek forgiveness, that we may confidently seek God's forgiveness, knowing that Jesus was tested in every way that we are tempted, 
we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority, that they may use their authority to free those who are unjustly restrained, call forth the gifts of others, and lead others to wholeness and service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Roman James, who will be baptized this weekend, and for his family, and for the members of St. John's Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, and for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we bring our petitions to you today, trusting that you have heard us and you will grant us our heart desires. We ask God this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we save. To Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in his body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in the presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. I'll get that. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done the Bible, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
This morning we have our annual financial report, our yearly report. We ask Ken Krieger, our chairman of the finance committee, to come forward to give us the news of the year. Thank you, Father Michael. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know about you, but it seems to me that I just uh, gave the 22-23 fiscal year report just a short time ago, and so we're here for the 23-24 re results. We did achieve another year of uh, positive cash flow. For the four major areas of giving, white envelopes, blue envelopes, offertory, and holy days, we were $31,653, or 3.6% over last year. <clears throat> Our annual festival contributed $81,500, and the school choice program continues to be a major factor in our revenue, with an increase in the number of students and the amount the state pays us per student. On the expense side, Increases in salaries and benefits, repair and maintenance of buildings, and the annual archdiocesan assessment caused expenses to go up. The net result was a positive $64,707. Less than last year, mainly due to two large estate donations last fiscal year. There is a section below the income statement that shows the income and expenses for donor restricted income. This is not part of our annual budget and the income can only be used for the purposes designated by the contributors. For those of you who may not be able to see the items listed, restricted donations were given toward the new bathroom, live streaming, and religious education tuition. Please note that the Love One Another donations are in this section. Items that were expensed during the year included new flooring, live stream equipment, and the scout fencing project. Now for the budget. We are required to have a balanced budget. We're off to another good start with a successful festival this past July. The net result was just over $83,000 and $13,000 over budget. Our school enrollment should hold or slightly increase. We have budgeted an overall salary, uh, budgeted for overall salary increases in an effort to remain competitive in the current job market. But because inflation is coming down, the increases should not be as high as last fiscal year. As a status report on the Love One Another campaign, our parish, as of September 6th, has collected 57% of our $1,200,000 five-year goal. We are in the third year of the five-year giving period. As you can see in the following slides, here are some of the before and after pictures of the completed Love One Another and Restricted projects. The school flooring project, the playground, the railings, the tuck pointing, and the new air conditioners, Skylights, Meditation Garden, and the Scout Fencing Project for the Meditation Garden. The following projects remain to be done. Security upgrades, uh, ceiling fan replacement in the church, updating the narthex, replacing the kneelers, and sealing and restriping the parking lots. Although a lot has been accomplished, as you can see, more needs to be done. Please continue to honor your pledges to the Love One Another campaign. To conclude, as a community, we can all be proud of what has been accomplished this past year. 
not only financially, but the group effort in the festival, the school, and care of the beautiful grounds around the parish. Please remember in your prayers all those who sacrificed to make St. John's ministries possible. Please consider St. John's when creating or updating your will or estate plan. I will be in the narthex after mass to answer any of your questions. And I would like to take this opportunity to recognize <clears throat> two individuals that helped with this presentation. Denise Kosulke, our Director of Administrative Services, and John Shinhelm. Thank you both, and thank you for your attention. And let us thank Ken with a round of applause. And our other announcements. The Respect Life Committee will hold a holy hour on Wednesday at noon. The Boy Scouts will be selling Christmas wreaths after all Masses this weekend. All Souls Day envelopes are available in the narthex. Please return by Friday, November 1st. The word among us for November is available in the narthex. The cost is $2 each, and script will be sold after all masses this weekend. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saint Michael, Holy the archangel, Lord. defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan on all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary, Queen of Victory. Pray for us. Just one other announcement with 10 days away from November when we pray for the souls in purgatory, we have a new supply of a weekly, a daily prayer for souls for the month of November, a month with our friends, the souls in purgatory. They're available for $5 in front of Father Reginald, and that money will be used to have masses said, especially for those men and women, families who have passed their faith on to each of us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.